This is Southern Cross News with Rachel Williams. Good evening, everyone. A rental car has been involved in an ugly crash on the edge of Hobart's CBD this morning. Witnesses say the vehicle ran through a red light and the four occupants weren't wearing seatbelts. Paramedics and rescue crews working to free people from the crash wreckage. Their vehicle coming to rest on a traffic island on Macquarie Street. After witnesses say it ran through a red light and collided with another car just after 9am. Luckily, the other driver took evasive action. The other driver, whilst going through the green light, he saw them coming through. He was able to hit his brakes. He still collided with the side of him. So if he hadn't have broke, hadn't have hit his brakes, it would have been far more serious. With their luggage, it's understood the four visitors from China had been making their way to the airport. A final journey in Tasmania that would spoil their trip. One factor increasing the severity of their injuries, seat belts. Four people that were in this car, uh, I've been told by the witnesses, weren't wearing seat belts and they've got injuries consistent with not wearing seat belts. It's vitally important, always wear a seatbelt, whether you're the driver, the passenger, you just always wear your seatbelt. The crash here on one of Hobart's main intersections has caused significant traffic delays. The disruption here coinciding with road closures for a morning fun run across the waterfront. We've got the fun run on this morning which was impacting the traffic already and this has had significant impact on the traffic at this intersection. While the visitors were transferred to hospital, luckily they and the other driver weren't seriously injured. Michael Breen, Southern Cross News. A woman is speaking out about her experience in Tasmania's health system after spending 34 hours in the Royal Hobart Hospital Emergency Department. Today, she said she's too scared to go back and is now calling for urgent action to fix our embattled health system. Fran Spears sharing her story today after she says she was left waiting 34 hours in the Royal Hobart Hospital Emergency Department. Despite the best efforts of staff, she says she spent most of that time in a wheelchair in the waiting room. It's like it's a third world country and I'm too scared to get sick now. I don't want to be sick because I don't want to go to that hospital. I thought I was going to die. Um, so it was terrifying. It was absolutely terrifying. One hospital performance indicator is the percentage of patients who leave emergency within four hours. At the Royal, it's only 63%, below the national average. After her own experiences in the ED, Miss Spears is now calling for urgent change so no one else has to go through what she did. What's happening to all the hundreds of other people? that are going to that hospital and spending all those hours in the emergency room. She's complained to the health minister but felt she was brushed aside. We know that the health system's far from perfect. We know there's a lot of work yet to do. The sooner that we get those buildings built, the sooner we can open the beds. I expect that this pressure will continue because Tasmanians are absolutely fed up with the state of the health system. When Parliament resumes on Tuesday, the government's focus will be on its controversial tough on crime agenda. Introducing legislation to add a former police officer to the prison parole board to make it easier for those fleeing domestic violence to break their lease and to get rid of remissions. We will be getting rid of early release from jail. We believe that offenders who are convicted and sentenced should serve their full time in jail. And the Greens will introduce a proposed crackdown on animal welfare, tabling tough new laws. Our amendment bill is designed to make sure we've got the best animal welfare laws in the country and right now we are a fair way off. But it's already shaping up to be another health dominated week in Parliament. Michelle Wisby, Southern Cross News. Large crowds looked towards the Hobart sky today as residents were treated to an impressive aerial display, marking 78 years since the Battle of Britain. The Royal Australian Air Force's roulette aerobatic team impressed young and old alike as it performed stunts high above the Hobart Cenotaph. The 1940 Battle of Britain saw German and British Air Forces clash in the skies over England, still known today as a significant turning point in the Second World War. Volunteer firefighters have given up their Sunday to help prepare for the bushfire season ahead. Brigades competing against each other in a big training exercise. 
Volunteer firefighters arrive on the scene of one of many challenging situations they'll face today. This scenario, a car rescue. Do you want to get the first aid gear out, man? Yep. Set up a base. As they respond, they're being scored by judges. Yep. Getting in and tilting that head back was really good, so just make sure we're maintaining an airway. Well, the most challenging part is probably the road crash rescue stuff. It, uh, there's a lot of aspects in it that really get you thinking, so uh, it keeps you on your toes and it, um, it does keep your brain ticking over what to think of next. To move on to the next challenge, crews are only given grid references and have to practice their navigation skills. When it comes to bushfires, uh, we, we don't always have the luxury of uh, streets because they tend to burn in, in remote areas, so being able to navigate to an incident is, is a key part of firefighting. A crew from Risdon Vale arrives at the next challenge. They're timed on the much needed skill of rolling out hoses. When you turn up the incidents, you've got to get hoses out and they're quick to get water onto a fire, so you've got to be able to roll them out, bowl them out, connect them. This training day held at sites from Cambridge to South Arm, an area which the TFS has recently transferred from the east coast to the Hobart district. So I've just recently come into the Hobart district area and we thought this would be a good opportunity for the brigades uh, from as far away as Milesworth and Taruna uh, to come down and become familiar with the area prior to the fire season. The Rokeby Brigade took out the top prize. Michael Breen, Southern Cross News. A picture-perfect tourist patch has become an adrenaline junkie's playground. Cataract Gorge was a white water mecca for 25 paddlers who took part in an extreme kayaking race organised by the Tamer Canoe Club. Although the wild conditions mean some tasted a bit more of the water than others. Oh, it gives them a fantastic adrenaline rush. Yeah, people will get a real kick out of it. The special event took advantage of a major water release by Hydro Tasmania where enough water to fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool was sent gushing down the gorge every minute and a half throughout the day. Well now to some news just in and there are reports Jetstar flight JQ739 flying to Launceston tonight has been forced to turn back to Melbourne after a suspected fire was found on board. It's understood to have landed safely in Melbourne where the incident is currently being investigated. Well, blue skies have encouraged Tasmanians to turn pink for this year's women's 5K run. A record number entered this year's event with more than 1,800 people pounding the pavement in support of the cause. The colourful crowd puller raises money for programs run by Cancer Council Tasmania. People seem really happy and everyone's wearing pink so we always love to see a touch of pink and it's just really wonderful to see the atmosphere of the day and everyone's having a really good time. The Cancer Council estimates one in two Tasmanians will be diagnosed with cancer by the age of 85. Meanwhile, the Hobart waterfront was filled with keen runners, raising much-needed funds for the Royal Hobart Hospital Children's Ward. The Cranky Fun Run is now in its 26th year, and today 800 participants came together for the good cause. This year we'll be handing over a cheque for $10,000, which is the proceeds from last year. Um, but because we've got more entrants this year, next year we'll probably hand over a cheque for another $15,000. We've been able to buy lots of equipment from emergency trolleys, um, beds and recliners for parents to sleep on, uh, distraction equipment, TVs, DVD players, um, lots of uh, games. In total, the event has raised more than $150,000 for the hospital. Now to a story that will remind us all to have courage and the confidence to dream. 15-year-old Finn Hilda from Launceston is an aspiring model with Down syndrome and recently he put it all on the line, taking to the catwalk for the first time in front of a packed crowd at Melbourne Fashion Week. Cheeky and courageous, this is Finn strutting his stuff. <laughs> giving a thumbs up to the crowd and loving every minute of it. Tell us how you felt when you were walking down the runway. Uh, yes, I feel so excited because I did the rock and roll thing. Um, I did the jump, so yes, yeah, good fun. This year, for the first time, Melbourne Fashion Week added a show called Access to Fashion, specifically aimed at showcasing those living with a disability on the runway. Finn's mum, Rachel, entered him in after seeing a post on social media and was thrilled to see just how much he enjoyed it. He felt so happy and confident and, 
um, and felt comfortable too. And that's huge, going interstate, staying somewhere totally new. It was a massive thing and he coped beautifully. Disability exclusion in the fashion industry is a real issue faced by many. Shows like this, though, are helping to change that. The opportunities are widening. People are being more open-minded and supportive and considerate. Finn has a disability, but it, it doesn't stop him from doing anything. I, I just think go for everything. Melbourne Fashion Week is watched by thousands right across the country, providing the perfect platform for wherever Finn decides to go next. I feel ex so excited for that, so yeah. The sky really is the limit for this little rock star. Jessica Moran, Southern Cross News. A big night of championship celebrations has rolled on today for the all-conquering North Launceston. After winning their fourth TSL flag in five years, players let off steam back at the club and were treated to some very special president's punch. There's no better feeling in football than winning the flag. And the Northern Bombers players certainly didn't want it to end. After a big night of celebrations, Josh Ponting hadn't even taken his boots off. Ah, no, I didn't try to get anywhere with the boots on. I haven't taken the kid off, so, um, yeah, that, I reckon they'd sort of look at me and said, go home, mate, so I didn't even bother. Ooh. Oh, that's easy work. Oh, that's terrible effort. The fifth quarter, the post-match partying, was as tough as ever on the body, and this mysterious mixer wasn't helping. It's very secret, but uh, it only comes out once a year, and it is uh, now the President's uh, Premiership Punch. Uh, the boys love it and uh, just before their hot roast rolls on a Sunday night they come up and they, uh, they have a, uh, a cleansing punch. The recipe's top secret but there was no hiding the Premiership medals presented proudly over red and black Guernseys. They were earned 24 hours earlier after defeating Lauderdale by five goals. Brad Cox Goodger had won his second straight Darrell Baldock medal for best of field. The feeling that you have right now with your best mates is you can't describe it and you know the next three days is just going to be the best days of the year. While playing coach Taylor Whitford revealed he asked players before their very first pre-season training what their legacy in state league football would be. What more can the group do to prove themselves against anyone in the state? So that's why we had to look internally. What do you want to do to improve? Why are you here? Um, and it worked I guess. Whitford is contracted for next season, but like his predecessor, Tom Couch, that could change given the right offer. You know, I'm not going to hide from the fact that I want to go further with my coaching, so if an opportunity comes along, you know, I'll look at it, but I'll sign for two years, and if I'm Tasmania, I'm at North Launceston. For Lauderdale, the disappointment was evident. Their performance can't be underestimated. There was only a point in it at the main break, but a dominant, if not inaccurate, four goals and 13 behinds in the second half handed the Northern Bombers control and their fourth flag in five years. And with a strong list of younger players still coming through, this club's success story may roll on well beyond today's Premiership headaches. Jake Birtwistle has capped off an incredible 2018, claiming a breakthrough bronze in the World Triathlon Series. It's the Tasmanian's first ever podium in the overall standings. In the same city he won Commonwealth Games gold earlier this year, Jake Birtwistle dived in on the Gold Coast, chasing triathlon's holy grail. Sitting second in the standings, he needed a superhuman performance to push aside Spain's Mario Mola. 32 seconds behind the leader after the swim, Birtwistle formed part of a dangerous chase group and finished the bike leg in beautiful form. Great transition for Jake. Usually so strong on the run, Bert Whistle was the one to watch, but a lead group pulled away and Bert Whistle continued to slip back, as Mola crossed the line to become only the second man in history to claim three world titles in a row. A dramatic and quite brilliant conclusion to the WTS men's season. Bert Whistle finished seventh, one minute and 12 seconds behind the winner, but still claimed the overall bronze on points. Still not 100% until I jump on the podium. I still don't know if I believe it, but uh, yeah, really happy with how I raced today and um, I, could, I couldn't have done anything more. Jacob Burt Whistle. So this will be a very popular medal, this one for Jake Burt Whistle, who so often this season we've seen with that explosive kick, but today just had to rely on good old fashioned grit. 
Meanwhile, Tasmanian Sarah Hoare has picked up a silver medal at Rowing's World Championships in Bulgaria. The Aussie women's four crew was hot on the heels of the United States and picked up the stroke rate in the final 500 metres. But the Americans fought off the challenge to take gold, with the Aussies taking silver ahead of Russia in third. And Alex Peroni avoided an early spill in the Formula Renault at Germany's famous Nürburgring. The Hobart Speed Demon started 11th on the grid before finishing in 10th. He has another chance to improve his place in the standings in race two tonight. Good evening. 15 in Hobart and Launceston today. That was the state's top, shared with Friendly Beaches and St Helens. Burnie 13, while well, Devonport got to 14 degrees. Showers in the west, south and central regions today with snow down to 300 metres in the morning. To 3pm, the highest rainfall was 36 millimetres at Mount Wellington. Smithton and Cressy both 14 today. Lowhead, Scottsdale, Bushy Park, Flinders and King Island all 13. 12 at Grove, Ooze and also Strawn. On the close-up, patchy low cloud over most of the state, especially in the west. A low to middle level cloud band moved towards WA today. Low cloud over Victoria and also Tasmania. The rest of the country is still mostly cloud free. Tomorrow high will sit over New South Wales with a broad low pressure trough through eastern western Australia. A pair of cold fronts lie over the bite. On the water tomorrow northwesterly winds at 20 to 30 knots in the west and south with swells to 4 metres. And with that a gale warning is current from south east Cape to Sandy Cape. A strong wind warning for all remaining coastal waters with the exception of the central north coast and a small craft wind alert for the southwest lakes. Monday's forecast now, Hobart, a cloudy day, 16, showers for Dover, 15, 15 also on the way for ooze. Launceston, showers becoming windy, 14, showers and wind for Devonport, 13, showers on the way for Scottsdale, a top of 12. Burnie, showers clearing, windy and 13, showers for Strawn, showers also for Stanley, 13 degrees. In the east, St Helens, a shower and 14. Fine day for Swansea, 16. Ross looking at a top of 13 degrees. Turning to Tuesday now, showers about the west and western tiers extending throughout during the afternoon. Fresh and gusty northwesterly winds. Showers again for the west, also north and far south on Wednesday. Possible afternoon showers elsewhere. And finally Thursday, a fine day apart from morning and late showers in the west. Capital cities tomorrow, Darwin, sunny and 30. Brisbane fine and 23, 19 for Sydney, Canberra 16, Melbourne 18, Adelaide sunny and 20, Perth becoming cloudy 18 degrees there. And right now it's 9 degrees in Hobart, Launceston 10 and mostly clear, Devonport 9 and partly cloudy. Rach, that wraps up Sunday's weather. Wonderful, thank you for that Laura. Well that's all your news for now. Thanks for joining us. Have a great evening and a great week. Good night.